Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update. It is the Earth Master here on this Sunday, February 25th, 2024. It's about 10.22 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.9 out in the region of uh, Oklahoma, it looks like, northern Oklahoma. We did see a little bit of activity overnight, including in this area that I said to keep an eye on. Uh, over here across the Java Trench, a uh, pretty decent amount of earthquake activity kicking up here overnight. Including a 5.7 and some uh, further migration here along the plate boundary. Yesterday we had noted a little swarm going on here that has since intensified and is making its way up across the northern edge here of the Java Trench just off the coast there of Sumatra. So we'll continue to watch that. Definitely shown some elevated movement out here in the last 24 hours across that area. Latest one shows a 4.6, uh, again, just off the coast of the uh, Sumatra area. All right, looking at the West Coast, a little bit of activity stirring up out here late last night, early this morning, I guess early this morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't think that would be considered nighttime. 3.5, well off the coast of Oregon. This is into the Blanco Fracture Zone. 3.5, that potentially could activate some further conditions down here across Northern California. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, the general plate movement and the uh, direction of the fault pressure transfer does point towards this area when we see movement out there. Uh, this earthquake, though, from last night, 2.2 uh, uh, prior to this earthquake up here in the Blanco Fracture Zone. But we'll continue to keep an eye there on Northern California. Uh, see what we got here across the coast range. Looks like a 3.1, 7 o'clock this morning. Fairly shallow. Getting a handful of other quakes in here as well. Uh, just along the coastal range across Southern California. Uh, mostly smaller microquake activity. Not a whole lot going on here across the southern portion of the state. Uh, just microquakes. And that appears to be the issue for the majority of the country out here today. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma, even down in the New Mexico, still seeing some activity, it looks like, out in the oil fields. Uh, one little lonesome earthquake here out in Georgia. Don't see too much uh, earthquake activity out there, but occasionally we get some. 2.2, uh, striking uh, about 4 o'clock this morning out here. Not for sure what's out there. I don't know if they have any type of pumping operations or what, but uh, kind of hard to tell with all the uh, vegetation out there, right? Let's see what we got. Well, it looks like a field out here. Not 100% not certain what's out there, but uh, either way, a, a little earthquake. Nothing of concern for now. All right, uh, look at this cluster going on here into the South America area. Big time clustering going on with a mix of deep earthquakes and shallow earthquakes there right into the Peru Chile Trench. The latest one shows a 4.9, but there's uh, definitely a handful more earthquakes coming in, including a three-pointer right now in the green flag. That's going to be this activity uh, right here. So we'll continue to watch that. Definitely seeing some elevated movement there, specifically in that spot there of the Peru Chile Trench up along the Middle America Trench here off the coast of Nicaragua and regions uh, south here it looks like. Definitely still seeing some activity on the globe, although this movement here is from yesterday. Uh, definitely seeing some uh, smaller quake activity there on the Earthquake 3D globe. So active regions out here today. Um, far as New Zealand goes, down here across this plate boundary, they're still continuing to see some deep activity here underneath the North Island region. It's been uh, fairly consistent here over the last week or so. Uh, let me go check out the GeoNet servers here and take a look. They've, they've just been getting, it seems like a little bit more elevated than normal, and it's all deeper activity. Uh, so looking at some of these earthquakes here, 137 kilometers deep for the mo uh, most recent one, uh, 3.0, underneath the North Island area. Now the reason why these guys are seeing deep earthquakes like that is because there's a subduction zone that sits just offshore this is not a subduction zone this is the uh the plate boundary a subduction zone begins right here the hikarangi subduction zone and then it extends up here off the north island coast and then as you get northward here you got the kermadec trench subduction zone and the tonga trench uh, but this specific area right here it's the one i'm watching They've been seeing some deeper movement quakes well away from the plate boundary itself. But got to remember, uh, to get some of those deep earthquakes, you got to go inland because this is a subduction zone underneath this area. Uh, so let's see what we got. 137 kilometers deep for that three-pointer. And uh, just in general, you know, more deeper activity than normal. 
Uh, not a whole lot of adjustment towards the surface. That's a pretty deep one, 162 kilometers there underneath North Island, 204. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely a, a considerable amount of deeper activity. We'll keep an eye on this region. All that deeper activity obviously adding strain upstream towards the locked areas, maybe the Hikarangi subduction zone or other faults that sit nearby. We'll continue to watch that region for some further movement. Looking out uh, further out and about here, uh, aside from the Java Trench activity, looking up north around Ta Taiwan and the East China Sea, uh, some of this earthquake activity from yesterday, the most recent one shows a 4.9, 6 o'clock this morning, fairly uh, shallow at about 10 kilometers deep or so. Uh, so definitely a little bit more active today. Uh, we'll continue to watch these regions here that are shown elevated activity and uh, definitely report back on anything that changes out here. The Atlantic Ocean, well, it looks like Iceland's seen some earthquake activity out there, so we better go see what's going on up there. I've uh, been saying uh, to watch for it. It looks like they're having a little bit more activity up here. A lot more activity, goodness. Um, 78 earthquakes. Uh, a little bit across the rift zones up north here. These are the uh, a little bit larger magnitudes compared to down south. A couple threes stirring up out here. Uh, this area interests across the Reckness Ridge near Grindavik, Iceland. Uh, seeing a decent amount of earthquake activity here around the Slingarfell region. Let's see what's going on uh, out there. Let me check the live streams real quick. I haven't even checked this yet. Uh, this is a site called livefromiceland.is. I don't see any visible signs of an eruption. Uh, and, of course, this is just one view looking at uh, the area. Now, there's multiple views here that one could see. Uh, should they uh, want to look at this site here, but I don't see any visible signs of an eruption uh, But we're definitely seeing some elevated earthquake activity out there right now uh, Let's see what we got for the most recent Notification here from the uh, the Icelandic Met Office. This was put out yet or a couple days ago actually So it doesn't look like anything has changed. They're still chatting about uh, how the area beneath the Savart Singhi area continues to accumulate magma, and they're guessing around 5 million cubic meters of magma um, are now accumulated underneath the area. Uh, the typical volume seen in the past, uh, right before the eruptive activity takes place, is about 8 to 13 million cubic meters. So we are quickly approaching that time frame and also that volume of magma that's sitting, that is sitting below. Uh, so a look here at the tilt meters. Let's see here. Let's run the eight hour times here. See what we got for uh, the area. Now the tilt meter is going to tell us oh, what's going on below the surface. Obviously GPS uh, movements. The area of interest, of course, going to be around Grindavik and still rising. Still looks like we're rising out here. This is the uh, vertical displacement. Notice that upward trend. So we've been accumulating magma since our previous eruption there back in early February. But uh, yeah, I think, I think it's just a matter of time here. Seeing this elevated earthquake activity could be a key indicator uh, to watch for some potential eruptive activity here in the hours and days ahead. Now, we're not at the level of uh, hundreds of earthquakes in this area, but it's definitely more noticeable out here today compared to last night. So... Keep an eye on the ice and area. Definitely seeing some uh, elevated earthquake activity out here today. Um, let's see here. What do we got down in Southern Cal? A couple earthquakes out there. And of course, Texas. Definitely quite active here today, it looks like. And uh, this area of Texas is a, a big time oil and pumping operation out here in the desert of Texas. You can see these little blue ponds. Those are not... Those are not swimming pools for the hard-working oil workers out here. They're, they're uh, wastewater disposal ponds and holding tanks right here. And there's a lot of earthquake activity that takes place out here in this region. Uh, yeah, so we'll continue to watch that. Uh, seems like it's been more consistent than normal. All right, uh, Hawaii. Zoom in here, see if anything major is going on. Doesn't look like it here in terms of uh, any elevated activity. Most of the movement there is across the Pahala area, which is very typical down there, about 33 kilometers deep. As far as specifics around the Kilauea volcano, uh, tilt meter up here. <clears throat> see what we got, if it's going to work. 
Uh, it does look like we're getting a little bit of inflation here, but uh, compared to obviously the last 30 days, not so much, right? We lost a lot of magma accumulation there at the summit. It uh, went off to the southwest rift zone and further south, I feel. And uh, just kind of watching this. There's really not a whole lot of change happening right now across the area. Uh, earthquake activity has pretty much dwindled down to nothing. And uh, just one of those things. Have to watch it and see what uh, plays out next. Far as space weather activity, we still have this giant sunspot here, 3590, looking right at us. It is currently flaring, it looks like, with some uh, yeah, a little M flare activity right now. Just looks like it's coming down from an M flare, an M2.1 uh, from sunspot number 3590. Now, it's getting, uh, you know, it's obviously center disk uh, directly looking at us here. Fairly complex. We're not center disk here completely, but as far as the Earth directed view, uh, it's squarely lined up. Quite a bit of complexity still here within the sunspot region. Um, if it's going to blast off any nice CMEs, it better do it soon uh, because in the days ahead, you know, this thing will be more positioned out here across the northwestern limb and uh, pointing away from the Earth. So if we're going to get some good solar storms, we better start getting busy there, 3590. It needs to be done here soon. Uh, so we'll watch this for some further flaring and subsequent CME. The CME is the activity that produces the uh, auroras, the solar storms, the geomagnetic storms, not the flares. The flares have a subsequent effect on the ionosphere, um, on the uh, sunlit side of the Earth. But uh, we need that CME to uh, impact the planet to see auroras. Uh, a couple sunspots out here on the eastern limb, very disorganized. We'll continue to watch those, though. Uh, those, though. <laughs> there we go. And see how um, it plays out. Kind of interesting looking here. Just got four in a row. And behind that, maybe another sunspot region there that we'll have to continue to watch. But right now, 3590 harbors the most potential here for some X flare activity at 30% chance. And, uh, of course, almost guaranteed C flare, M flare at 70% chance. So we'll continue to watch this. No major roars in the forecast for now. Hopefully we can get that to change, right? Severe weather outlook. They do have a severe weather outlook here on day three. Looking at uh, a decent chance of some severe weather out here as we head into Tuesday out here across portions of the Midwest. We'll cover that a little bit more tomorrow, but it looks like the likelihood of some severe weather is going to kick up there early next week. Going to be the interaction here of a much colder air mass coming down out of Canada, interacting with some uh, warmer air, obviously, and a little bit of moisture in there as well. That will combine and create that severe weather potential as we head into early next week. Uh, the west coast we do have a decent storm system coming in it looks like maybe thursday into friday colder system bringing some snow uh, there's really not a whole lot of moisture with this next system coming in uh, on monday it looks like it's going to be mainly uh, just some light showers and some snow at the higher elevations but it's not until we get towards the end of the week that we notice a little bit more uh, a little bit more precipitation than snowfall and that's going to last around for a little bit uh, after that uh, maybe another storm system coming in uh, and maybe another bigger one after that see these change left and right this was absent from last night uh, it didn't show any of this so these things can change in a blink of an eye in each model run here from day to day so this is a ways out we'll take that with a grain of salt right Either way, we do have some colder air coming down in there uh, for now, center portion of the country. I know it's quite warm out there across areas of the country. Let's take a look at the uh, map here from Windy, the current temperature map out here, feeling a little bit like spring and summer out in portions of Texas. I know it's a little early out there, right? What is it, 1230 out there right now? 80 degrees around San Antonio, San Angelo around 82, Odessa 80. Goodness, yeah, a little taste of uh, summer coming up here. Those 60s and 70s stretching way up uh, into the northern plains there, it looks like. Maybe not quite into North Dakota. Uh, but all this is going to change with the arrival here of that colder air mass. Well, tomorrow I think you guys got one more hot day coming in. Uh, I think tomorrow is going to be the more hot day with maybe temperatures up in the 90s. Look at that San Angelo around 90. I heard some places may hit around 100 or so. Uh, and I believe it, looking at these temperatures close to the border with Mexico, 
either way enjoy a couple days of some nice heat and uh, after that we got that blue coming in on the map look at that gonna bring in some much colder air that will be the severe weather maker that colder air reaching down into Kansas and Oklahoma and eventually uh, making its way towards the east it looks like so yeah enjoy a couple days of warmth I kind of like it this time of year where we're looking at uh, you know the fluctuations here in the temperature it's kind of nice I like it uh, and that goes for California we don't quite get those temperature fluctuations as out here but still we've had a nice couple days of uh well yesterday hit about 74 here outside of chico where i'm at today is supposed to be about 68 or so and then we got that uh, colder air coming in uh and a little bit of a little bit of rain so uh yeah we'll definitely continue to uh keep an eye on the weather still looks quite cold up north but summer is knocking on the door here we'll see what uh see what this brings it's going to be an interesting year i think for uh for some severe weather out here all right, folks, uh, let's see what else we got. Seismograph stations, hot caves, Hawaii, and a little bit of small microquake activity. Um, one little spike there on Yellowstone. Let me see what we got. I, I always, I sometimes forget about checking it, and one of the days that I do forget to check, it's going to be having a huge earthquake swarm, but it doesn't look like much. This scattered activity that you're seeing, I bet you it's wind uh, that is showing up all across the park. Uh, I'll show you guys here real quick. Let's go back to the windy map. Uh, those readings are quite, um, yeah, see, look at that. <laughs> when you look at the seismograph stations of wind, it looks like it was windy all yesterday and overnight as well. That reading is showing up all across the park, and I see why. You know, there's some decent wind gusts out here, uh, 50 mile per hour winds. That would explain the noise, the environmental noise that you see on the seismograph stations there. So, yeah. All right. Aside from that, uh, have yourself a good Sunday. Enjoy the rest of the weekend here. I'm going to probably try and get out and do a little bit more yard work. I mean, it's not going to be quite as warm, but uh, either way, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be about 70. So 70 to me is nice. I'll take it. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later this evening. Take care.